I like watching him bowl. I really do. Looking for five. And there it is. Do it. You want to see the intensity? He wants this one. Look at these eyes again. He acts almost like a shark getting ready to bite. The eyes roll back in his head, and he just <laughs> rips the bottom out of the ball. One three pocket annihilated. Ten pins annihilated. They're out of here. They're falling like pencils. <laughs> pencils. Pencils. Says him. Listen. Pen pencils. You had to be here. Okay. Really. Yeah, you had to see that. I'm sorry, but. Uh, He's fabulous, no doubt about it. This guy's not going to roll over and play dead, but ooh, he tugged it. He tugged it, and he knew it. Well, that is the first miss, if you want to call it a miss, in this game. Eaton had rolled four consecutive strikes. Hemler is working on five. And the way Hemler's letting it go... Eaton cannot afford an open frame. No, not at all. The only thing Stan Eaton can hope for is for Brian to make a mistake and then and then capitalize somewhere on that. But as we can look at the score and see, Stan Eaton with a 109 in the fourth frame, or uh, yes, in the fourth frame, and Brian Himmler perfect through five, uh, obviously has a uh, an 11 pin lead as we speak. Soon to go to 21. Looking to get back on track. And he does. That's what you talked about, Jen. When you make a mild mistake, the key is to always bounce back from it. You have to capitalize. Or de-emphasize, rather, your mistake. <laughs> get rid of it. Go on to the next frame. What was working? Did just that. Everything's been working for Brian Himmler. Mentioned he averaged 253 last Watch week this. in three games. Oh. Whoops. Whoops. Okay, let's. You heard, Why me, you heard me say whoops. Okay. Watch the release is, is where we're going to see it. We're going to see the hand actually go around the ball early. Let's see if we can pick it up right here. Stop. There we go. We saw the hand go around it early. Skids the ball out to the right. You got the wrong angle. You got the wrong roll. Watch the deflection. There it deflects. The six pin goes into the ditch. No car this week, folks. No, but, but that's we all like it takes is yeah. one little bitty tiny mistake. That's what makes it so difficult. Yeah. It hasn't happened in how many years? Yeah, that's way good. back. Way back. We weren't giving away a car then either, but. Uh, Let's see how he does on his spare. Oh, like most people, we've seen more one-pin spares missed today. All cross alley. Than we had probably in all 16 shows last year. I'd venture to say that. May very well be. And if anybody wants point. to check me on that, I'd, I'd like to know. But uh, it just feels like we've seen way too many single-pin spares missed. Well, now this is a big frame for Brian because he did leave it open, whereas Eaton picked up his spear. It's a good frame. Yeah. Ten up. And ten history. You, you were saying, Jen, before, he doesn't look 15, he doesn't act 15, he doesn't bowl or react like he's 15. A lot of players would be unnerved by a single pin spare miss. Not this man. Uh-uh. He knows he can strike, and he throws a lot of strikes. So why not throw another one? What the heck? So now we have a two-pin advantage up for Stan Eaton after that miss by Brian in the sixth frame. And boy, how quickly it changes. That'll make it 12. Stan's not intimidated right now, Jen. No, not at all. He's calm, cool, collected. Just go out and do what you need to do. And the roll-off this morning against Bill Halflin, he had a 266 and did have an open spare. All the rest were strikes. Yeah, it's not too shabby having an open frame and finishing with a 266. No doubt. And the reason I say not intimidated, of course, Himmler is considerably younger than Stan. Stan's 32, but I use that in reference to the crowd here, which is obviously pro-Brian Himmler. 
Big shot. Big shot for Stan Eaton. Gives him 189 in the seventh, and that gives him a 12 pin advantage. Plus 12 advantage, Stan Eaton in the seventh frame. But Brian Himmler does have the strike working in the eighth, and he could really, really put the pressure on the ninth and tenth frames if he strikes out. But he's got to make some good shots here. Not going to get help. The wrong angle again. Um, the release was better, but the angle was about the same as the other 10 pin. Arced it out a little bit too much. Not quite enough on the ball to carry it out. Now, I don't care how experienced Brian Himmler is. When you've missed a 10 pin on the same lane coming back and you leave another one, I don't care how cool he is. He's got to be feeling it. Yeah, he, exactly right. you got to be thinking, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> what I did here before. Uh, it's a good well, ball. Let's see if he makes a good adjustment here on the spare. Looks close. Yes. <laughs> as, as he cuts the pin in half, right? <laughs> Gives him 197 in the eighth frame. Uh, Stan Eaton, at this point, is in control, but not in the winner's circle yet. Brian Himmler could still win the match should he strike out and he gets some help from Stan Eaton. So, in essence, Brian really does need to strike out, barring a major disaster, of course, on Eaton's part, but he needs to strike out to basically have any hopes of winning the way Eaton is bowling. Exactly. He needs this one. Well, there you go. When he needs it, what's he do? He, he maximizes it. Let's look, look at it here. Just plants, rips the finger holes right out of the ball. Does he like it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's a ticket. Got ten and uh, ten pins jumping all over the place there. Gives him two seventeen in the ninth frame. Potential two forty seven. Well, we always talk about building in the ninth, and he needs ten up down here and leaves at seven. Did he? Whoa, whoa, adjust whoa. it all there. <laughs> Don't go away, folks. Uh, no, it was just it was a good shot, a uh, little bit of a bad break, maybe a little bit more speed caused it. I'm I'm not really sure, but uh, let's do some quick calculations here so we come up with it. Now Eaton left an open frame in the last game. He's been perfect in this game, and this is a very important seven pin. Looks pretty good. There it is. Okay, so David, working on the calculations, are you still doing it? I remember Stan some of your math problems. 248 if he goes strike spare. Yep. Which is, you know, strike spare, taking the 248. Brian can strike out for 247. So he needs definitely to strike out, and in that case, then he would need a bad count from Stan. Yeah, he needs some help from Stan Eaton right here. Uh, a strike would be a big, big plus because then the count would be out of the question. Well, there's the strike. So much for that idea. So I guess the next ball here is, is very crucial. Well, he needs nine altogether. So, like, a big split or something would be the only thing that would change mm -hmm. this ranch round, which is always conceivable. I know it's not over yet, but I, I don't, don't want to you step shot. out on a limb. You guys are killing me. I'm making any type of prediction, so... Don't, don't, don't want to... I can I, tell you the situation. I know it's not over, <laughs> but are either one of you shocked? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm not shocked. They're both very, very experienced players. Um, uh, advantage with experience would go to Stan Eaton. Now, what we, what we have here is easy. If he makes a spare, he wins. If he should miss a single pin spare, and we've seen it happen four or five times already today, Brian Himmler could strike out the tie, and then we would go into a ninth and tenth frame roll-off, Tommy. But a spare will win it for him. And don't think that Stan Eaton doesn't realize that. This is the difference. First and second place and some major cash. How about that? Boy, I would have never guessed that one. I would. 
I mean, I mean, it's it's tip. How often have we seen it today? Going across lane today has been just awesome. Okay, now last week, let's set up what we saw last week. Don Scudder. Well, Brian Hemmer could have shut Don Scudder out in the tenth frame with any kind of a mark, Tommy. He opened in the tenth frame. Don Scudder needed the first three to win. Needed the first three to win. He got the first one. The second one he left the week 10 on. We're, we are seeing some absolutely fantastic bowling. Does he want this one? Does he maximize it out? He came off his feet to throw this ball, Mike. <laughs> Goodness, look at it. The rack was ripped in half. Stan, Stan is thinking about what in the world did I do? I let this kid have a chance at me? Yeah. But he knows that Hemler has to still knock up 20 here. It's out of his control. Yes. This man has the hammer. It's number two. And oh, not going to go. A super shot, too. A little wide. A little wide, but a good shot, Jen, as you referred to. A great, great match. We couldn't ask for anything better than this. Stan Eaton, 247, becomes our king for this week. Brian Himmler just going through the motions. Uh, what well, what can you say? It was a great, great match. 235 for Brian Himmler, a great showing. 247, Stan Eaton is our king, and we'll be back to present some checks in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. Welcome back. We're here with our winner, Stan Eaton. And, David, you have some paper and a little hardware to give away. That's right, Tom. Stan, you really earned this. It's a nice plaque to hang on the wall at the home or the office. And $750 on behalf of the BPA. Great, great shoot, and you played the hold area just fine. <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing Stan next week, and we certainly hope you'll join us then. For David Newrath and Jennifer Kleekamp, I'm Tom Brenneman saying so long from Kingpin Lake. Greater Cincinnati, BPA, 14K, King of Bowling. Brought to you by 14K, Cincinnati's legendary premium beer. 14K, the one, the only, the original.